Excellent. Excellent. Good evening, everyone. And how are you all doing tonight? I'm coming at you from a uh, mild evening. I should say it's in the low 60s here in Portland. Rainy all day. Uh, but beautiful. I mean, I can't complain. It hasn't rained for months, and it rains a couple times, and people are like, oh, it's rainy. Like, it's cool with me. <laughs> um, so what was I going to talk about? I came outside, and I popped out here with the camera, because I wanted to make this, uh, this video to cover this point I had. I guess I can't remember, so never mind. Take care. No, just kidding. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, I have so many thoughts to go through my head on a daily basis, and uh, uh, I guess what it had to do with the reward system of the brain, and uh, asking myself, why do those of us who seek awareness, seek knowledge, whatever you want to call it, I guess seeking knowledge or philosophy, the love of wisdom, why do people seek it? Uh, and, and, and at one time I thought maybe there was some end game people were trying to attain. Because I consider myself a philosopher, but I'm not yearning for anything. And I've seen a lot of people who I guess would be considered philosophers who seem to be yearning and, and studying to find this, this answer to something. And I guess maybe it's just from their works that I've been able to determine that that answer can't be found in human terms. Um, and that many people find it their own way. Uh, for example, you know, we're able to cover many different books and uh, things that people have written pr prior to us that at least give us an idea of what others have already tried and thought about, you know, and the different things that religions have brought and whatnot. <clears throat> and uh, I ask myself kind of why, why people seek knowledge, because what is the reward for that? Because the reward center, the pleasure center of the brain, when you do something and you when you seek when you have a, a seeking behavior um, often especially with drugs uh, this can be you know it triggers dopamine it triggers this release of dopamine uh, and you become you, know, you might call addicted to something and uh, it can happen with shopping you know it's not just drugs people don't realize this that shopping can be an addiction um, and actually release chemicals in the brain um, eating food releases chemicals in the brain, feel-good chemicals. Uh, so, you know, you can eat drugs that have drugs in them, or precursors to drugs, or just eat food that creates drugs within your body. It's very hard to distinguish between them. And, <laughs> um, especially with some of these more subtle, uh, subtle things, but anyway, seeking this awareness for some people seems to be a bit long. Uh, uh, like, like, like there's something they're gaining from it, obviously, or else they wouldn't be seeking, right? So myself as a seeker, I can say honestly that there must be a dopamine release from gaining new knowledge. That there must be some sort of an aha from that aha moment, you know, where you new synapses are connected and, uh, you know, different parts of the brain are connected. And the brain seems to reward those who choose to think. Now think about that for a minute. What does that really mean? I'm... What it means to me, I guess, would be that the brain, they say, I believe the brain takes like 20% of the body's energy, which is quite a bit considering the size of it. Uh, that's a lot of energy. If that's true, uh, and thinking takes the most brain power, then uh, thinking and reasoning and, and pondering life would seem to be a wasteful thing. So it would seem that humans would want to shut that down, that nature would want to shut that down and just leave the instinctual part of it going. If you see where I'm going with this. And this is all kind of unveiling to me too, because I've never really pondered this idea. <coughs> the brain folds, the folds in the brain. There's the gray matter on the outside, and then the white matter on the inside. The gray matter is where all of our, basically, information is, and in in all our tools. The white matter, which is right underneath that in the brain, those are like the neural pathways that connect all these parts of the brain. So whenever two parts of the brain make a different realization together, let's say, you know, I'm using these metaphors, uh, there's no other way to really do it. They send a signal between each other, create a new synaptic connection. Um, uh, they fire and they wire together, these neurons, and uh, this must 
reward us in some way. The brain can be taxed heavily and still be functioning pretty well. Uh, you know, for example, psychedelic drugs. One of the greatest things about psychedelic drugs they found is they actually shut down the, uh, the prefrontal cortex. And that allows us to basically shut down our rational thinking mind. Yet we can still rationalize. And most people who've taken psychedelics know that you can still functional, uh, you can still be functional and you can still rationalize things. You can still uh, solve problems and figure things out and discuss things. So it doesn't shut down everything. It just shuts down uh, the part of your mind that, that sits and thinks and I guess does problems. It allows all the parts to work together to do it all at once. Very difficult thing to explain, but explain. <laughs> uh, prefrontal cortex. So, all these different herbs that we take, these plants that we consume, that change our, you know, that, that change who we are, uh, those create this reward center, uh, this pleasure seeking behavior because they make us feel good. And likewise, knowledge must make us feel good or else we wouldn't be expending the energy on it. Uh, and I might be wrong, and I'm curious to know what people think of this. Like, uh, we all know of people who have thought themselves into a frenzy. I mean, people who are flustered because they think too much. So, I guess, in a nutshell, the idea of gaining knowledge is the ability to understand things better so we can let things go and worry less, if that makes sense. Because while thinking may tax the brain, stress taxes it probably tenfold more. And our bodies as well. So, I guess, you know, these are all just coming to mind as I'm saying it, so it's like, that makes sense to me, I guess, that, uh, you know, that, that by thinking and rationalizing and understanding our world better, it actually protects us from harm. Um, so that makes sense. If, you, if you're sitting here pondering what would happen if I jumped off this, you know, and think, well, I might get hurt. Um, it's a way of thinking things through before we do them. And that's one, one thing about humans, is we can actually set forth a series of events in our minds long before it happens, and then fulfill that. And it's a pretty interesting concept. You know, animals, they can think, and they can rationalize. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, whales and, and dolphins are very intelligent. They communicate, they play, um, they understand things in their own way, but they don't, uh, they don't have the desire to create like we do. And what, what gives humans the desire to create and to build? Um, and for some reason, you know, evolution decided to push, you know, opposable thumbs on us. And, you know, it's an amazing thought. Uh, the idea that we have evolved to do what we're doing. <laughs> kind of where I'm going with this, I guess. Um, we have evolved to be the thinkers, you know? We're evolved to be different from each other, yet to be one and all and the same. Uh, we, we've evolved to go completely complex so we can understand why simplicity is important. I guess we've, involved, we've evolved to complexity in order to understand the benefit of simplicity, if that makes sense. So, I'll bid you adieu. I'll leave it at that. I like pondering these ideas, but you know, you can only go so far with it. It's still just another, you know, another guy sitting there and thinking. <laughs> but uh, this, one, this one, I think, really helped me to understand, because, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, why am I thinking? You know, why is it even useful? Like, what do I get out of it? I know some people get an ego boost out of it. I should throw that in. Some people gain knowledge for power, that they want to gain knowledge to gain power over others. I seek knowledge to gain power over my own existence. And I would never abuse that to gain from other people. So, uh, have a good day.